deliberate cold exposure can be used to cause increases in the release of several, if not all of these, vast improvements in mood and vast improvements in levels of cognitive attention and energy. A molecule that is commonly misunderstood as the molecule of pleasure increase these chemicals anywhere from 2.5x to 250% to as high as There are cold protocols that have been tested in peer-reviewed studies that are designed to improve mental performance. They are designed to improve things like resilience or your grittiness or your ability to move through challenge or to regulate your mind and your internal state under conditions of stress. And we can define stress very specifically as times when adrenaline, also called epinephrine and or norepinephrine, also called noradrenaline, are elevated in your body. So they work as kind of a pair to increase our level of agitation, our level of focus, and our desire and our ability to move. They are often co-released from different sites in the brain and body with dopamine, a molecule that is commonly misunderstood as the molecule of pleasure, but is actually the molecule of motivation, reward, and pursuit. So dopamine, norepinephrine, and noradrenaline tend to be released together under certain conditions and deliberate cold exposure can be used to cause increases in the release of several, if not all of these in ways that can improve your levels of attention and your mood. But the key point is that your mental state is shifted when you are exposed to certain forms of cold. And many people use deliberate cold exposure specifically to shift their body state as a way to train their mental state so that they can better cope with stress in real life. And by real life, I mean when life presents stressful events. You can become more resilient through the use of deliberate cold exposure. Now, because of the ways in which deliberate cold exposure can increase this category of chemicals called the catecholamines, that includes dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine, it can also be used to elevate mood for long periods of time. And I'm going to discuss a specific protocol that has been shown to increase these chemicals anywhere from 2.5x to 250% to as high as 500% five times over baseline. These elevations in norepinephrine and dopamine are very long lasting in ways that people report feeling vast improvements in mood and vast improvements in levels of cognitive attention and energy. So by my read of the literature, these seem to be healthy increases in our baseline levels of these chemicals in ways that can really support us. So I'll give you a protocol for that. Now, those are some of the mental effects of deliberate cold exposure. But deliberate cold exposure has also been studied in animal models and in humans in the context of increasing metabolism. Even in converting certain fat cells that we call white fat cells, which are the ones where energy is stored, the ones that we typically think of as kind of blubbery fat, to beige or brown fat, which is thermogenic fat, meaning that it can increase core body temperature and serves as kind of a furnace by which we increase our core metabolism. So with a very broad stroke, I can say that white fat is generally the kind of fat that people want less of and beige fat and brown fat is generally the kind of fat that if you're going to have fat cells and you certainly need fat cells that you want more of. They are thermogenic. They help you stay lean. They actually serve as a reservoir for heating your body up if you're ever confronted with a cold challenge. So we're going to talk about how to use cold for metabolism as well. And of course, people are using deliberate cold exposure to reduce inflammation post-exercise, to reduce inflammation generally. And people are also using cold to enhance performance in the context of strength training, in the context of endurance training, and we'll talk about those data as well. But where I'd like to start is with mental performance. And I'd like to detail what happens when we deliberately expose ourselves to cold. It's key to point out the word deliberate. It's not just about the state that we are in. It's about the state that we are in and whether or not we had anything to do with placing ourselves into that state and whether or not we did that on purpose or not. There are important effects of what we call mindset. And the science of mindset tells us that if we are doing something deliberately and we believe that it's going to be good for us, it actually can lead to a different set of physiological effects 
than if something is happening to us against our will or without our control. Now, this is different than placebo effects. Placebo effects are distinct from mindset effects. When we talk about deliberate cold exposure, meaning that you are placing yourself into a cold environment on purpose in order to extract a particular set of benefits, almost always that means getting uncomfortable. And one of the most common questions I get when discussing the use of cold for sake of mental or physical performance, metabolism, etc., is how cold should it be? How cold should the water be? How cold should the environment be? How cold depends on your cold tolerance, your core metabolism, and a number of other features that there is simply no way I could know or have access to. So I would like you to use this rule of thumb. If you are using deliberate cold exposure, the environment that you place yourself into should place your mind into a state of, whoa, I would really like to get out of this environment, but I can stay in safely. Okay, now that might seem a little bit arbitrary, but let's say you were to get into a warm shower and it would feel really, really nice and you were to start turning down the warm and turning up the cold, there would be some threshold at which it would feel uncomfortable to you. And if you were to continue to make a little bit colder than that, you would really want to get out of the shower, but you were confident that you could stay in without risking your health, right? Without risking a heart attack. Now that's very different than jumping into a very, very cold lake or, you know, I've seen these images of people that will cut holes into, um, you know, frozen over lakes and they'll get into that cold water. If you are trained to do that and you have the right conditions, et cetera, that can be done reasonably safely, but that's certainly not what I would start with. And for many people that will be too cold. And indeed some people can go into cold shock and can die as a consequence of getting to that extremely cold water very quickly. Now that's not to scare you away from deliberate cold exposure. It's just to say that there's no simple prescriptive of how cold to make the environment in order to extract maximum benefit for mental or physical performance. So the simple rule of thumb is going to be place yourself into an environment that is uncomfortably cold, but that you can stay in safely. Okay. And you'll have to experiment a bit. And that number, meaning that temperature will vary from day to day. It will vary across the 24 hour cycle. The second most common question I get about deliberate cold exposure is whether or not cold showers are as good, better, or worse than cold water immersion up to the neck. Cold water immersion up to the neck with your feet and hands submerged also is going to be the most effective. Second best would be cold shower. Third best would be to go outside with a minimum amount of clothing, but of course, clothing that is culturally appropriate and that would allow you to experience cold to the point where you would almost want to shiver or start shivering. 